Uh, Joe Bradke, the owner of the building, called me. Uh, a lot of trucks, obviously. Um, we we were not on fire up to this point yet. Um, I had this strange thought that maybe we'd be able to save something, but clearly that's not going to happen. That seems to be the case. As a standard part of the brewing process, we use CO2 and nitrogen, uh, and there were a couple of tanks on that side wall, and we assume that that's what exploded. It's a little unreal, yeah. It's it's hard. It's going to be hard. Um, but we're lucky to have had it, and we will see how we move forward. Uh, we have about 12 employees right now. How are you getting by in these past years? Skin of our teeth, just like everyone else. Um, we have been working really hard to adapt and grow and change as uh, the pandemic has pushed through and we've managed to do it. And I think that that is a huge gift. In addition to that community, as you're talking about what a treasure you are here. That's good to hear. And, um, I know it doesn't really make up for what you're The community has always been uh, the heart of what we do. So we'll just continue in that direction, whatever that means. I wish I could tell you what that was. I just don't. No. Absolutely. Thank you. Twisted Hippo. Thank you so much. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> it's just, it's hard to see everything that you've worked for literally go up in flames, obviously. But all I care is that people are safe. I keep thinking about um, the art that we're losing and the, the, the piece of the community that we're losing, but we're not losing community members. And that's really all that matters. We'll get through the rest of it. I apologize, I can't even say it. Can you spell the first name? Sure, it's M-A-R-I-L-E-E. -E. Rutherford, R-U-T-H-E-R-F-O-R-D. We opened in January of 2019. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lots of hard work got, went into that space. It's gut-wrenching. You said there was artwork? One of the, the key components of our brand was art. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of original art in there that has gone forever. Um, there was a mural that's gone forever, and, and uh, uh, our, our primary artist actually had a show up in the gallery that I'm pretty gut-wrenched about him having lost as well. It's tough. Yeah. Is there anything else I can answer? Uh, yeah, 312-296-6441. Can you say that one more time? 312-296-6441. M-A-R-I-L-E-E, Marily. Yeah. Thank you. gut-wrenching testimony uh, from Marilee Rutherford, who is a local business owner. Her business was one of the businesses affected by this fire. It does appear we're going to get an update. Let's listen in live, raw and unfiltered. When you're ready. Deputy District Chief John 
Giordano, G-I-O-R-D-A-N-O, 2nd District. G-I-O-R-D-A-N-O. Yes, just like the pizza. All right, so approximately 3.30 this morning, we got a call for a fire, which came in at 4340 North Richmond. That's a three-story ordinary occupied. There was heavy fire, heavy fire load in the rear, second and third floor. When the original companies pulled out, they uh, called for an emergency box alarm, which brought more companies. They started making some, uh, getting people out to safety as fast as possible, leading out lines. With the winds and conditions that we had tonight, we had an exposure problem. We had a uh, 150 by 150, which is a uh, uh, commercial brewery and some other units in there. And it got into that building as well. So we had two structures going at the same time. At that point, once I arrived, we, uh, we made it a 311 uh, alarm. That brought about 150 personnel on the scene. We have about 50 companies still working as of right now. Uh, we had one transport, serious, uh, local hospital, not sure what ambulance. I believe it was a 60-year-old male, and that's the only report I have of any injuries. No firefighter injuries. Um, we have it contained to the building right now, so we'll be here for a while and uh, putting, putting out the fire. Well, we have a brewery, so we're not really sure what they had in there. It could have been material from the brewery. I know they, they did have tanks, um, so we're, we're really not sure that's under investigation. But there was some uh, explosions inside the building. It was contained to inside the building. So no, nobody got hurt from any of the explosions. I, I, I believe so. I believe the initial call was from the apartment building. I cannot verify that. There was fire on the second and third floor in the rear, rear porches when the companies pulled up. He heavy fire when the original companies pulled up. And the 60-year-old male, was he a resident of that building? I, 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 I believe so. He was gone by the time we, we pulled up. The am first ambulance um, took him away right away. Okay, I, and I believe it may have been smoke inhalation. Can you tell us about any other measures that were taken? I saw the gas line was shut off. Yeah, so, so our uh, we, we had a partial building collapse, which I failed to mention. So our main concern is getting everybody out of the uh, collapse zone. So we, we, we had to relocate companies, make sure everybody, we have some cars that are damaged on the street and some other uh, damage in the area. We had to make sure we got all the fire companies and per personnel out of safety's, uh, out of uh, harm's way, out of the collapse zone. It, it, it was most, mostly self-evacuated. People were eva evacuating themselves. I don't know how many are displaced yet. We will have human services on the scene for, for, for them. In your time here, how often do you see a fire that looks like that? Not very often, but it does happen. There were some wind conditions that didn't help us today. Close the proximity of the uh, structure here to the back porches, which got inside a truss-constructed building, which bowstring truss is a major concern of ours and we did have a roof collapse and partial building collapse as well yes in, in the commercial building yes how long do you expect for this to be going on well the looks at as of right now we're going to be here for a few for a while we'll be here all morning all morning yeah by the end of the day it'll, it'll be done but we'll be here all morning uh, we're, we're without power and lights right now in the area, so we're having some water issues on the street. The water department is on the scene taking care of that. Okay. Anything people here should know that live here uh, in terms of when stuff is coming back? We'll, we'll, we'll have an update later on in the morning when, when stuff will be up and running. But the power will be shut down. There may be some gas out of uh, out of service for a while as well. Two major fires, yes. We still have the apartment building going, and as you can see right behind me, we still have this uh, commercial building going as well. So we have, uh, like I said, we got about uh, 150 personnel on the scene. Uh, EMS Plan 1, we have EMS on the scene as well. So a lot of support here, and everybody's doing uh, doing their best right now. No more danger of uh, anything else? No, we, we, it's, it's pretty much contained to the structure itself. 
So it, it sh we, we should. We did have another exposure to the uh, east, another three-story uh, commercial building, and there was some little fire in there, and they, we, the uh, members did a great job of containing that and putting that out, or we could have lost another structure. But safe to say that that structure is in good shape. The water issues are more sore with the water building up on the streets. So we're trying to keep it out of the uh, residents, neighbors, uh, basements, and everything like that. So water department's on the scene working on that. Hey, Chief. What's that? Three story. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have you move down this way because the fire's over on the and there we did just get an update from the fire deputy fire chief uh, so this fire started at 3 30 a.m um a call came in for a fire at 4340 north richmond avenue the fire started in a three-story ordinary occupied building um that is fire department speech for an apartment building a three-story apartment building uh, there was a heavy fire load in that building uh, and when they arrived the second and third floors the back part of that apartment building was on fire um, they believe that the initial call came in from the apartment they believe uh, that it was a resident of the apartment that was brought uh, and taken to a hospital uh, the deputy fire chief saying that he believes that that 60 year old man that we reported earlier this morning he was taken in for smoke inhalation uh, but more on this fire, they uh, immediately called for a backup, which uh, an emergency box is what he outlined, which called more companies to the fire. Uh, their number one priority was, of course, getting people out of that building. Uh, the deputy fire chief saying that the winds and conditions this morning did not help the cause. Uh, we are seeing our camera move around here uh, because we are bringing you these images live, raw, and unfiltered. I do want to bring you uh, the latest tweets as well that we have gotten from the fire chief as we get this camera situated. But this is what the building looked like before the fire. This is one of the commercial buildings that the fire eventually spread to. Uh, so once again, back to what the deputy fire chief just explained to us. Started at a three-story apartment building. There are currently 150 personnel on the scene. Uh, one man was transported to a hospital. He, be he is believed to be a resident of that apartment building where this fire uh, originally started. Uh, the deputy fire chief saying that we will be here for a while, most definitely all morning. So uh, to recap, this fire started at the apartment building and spread to nearby commercial businesses. Uh, there was a total collapse of one of the commercial businesses. We heard just about eight to 10 minutes ago from an owner uh, of one of those businesses, Mar Marilee Rutherford, uh, and she gave a really heartbreaking testimony. Uh, she owned what appeared to be a, an art gallery of sorts uh, and her art and art of others that she had on display was lost. Uh, there are no firefighter injuries to report. Uh, at the moment, the fire is contained to the apartment building and to one commercial building. Those are the two fires that they are currently fighting. Uh, the firefighters quick response and they were able to save one commercial building. Uh, so there is one that is saved that could have collapsed just as the others did. Um, the Chicago Fire Department highlighting that there is no power and light in the area. Uh, that residents may be without gas as well. Uh, there are some water issues on the street, but they are working to get all of that squared away for those residents. Uh, and once again, this is a story that we have been following all morning long. A, the initial call came in at 3.30 a.m. Um, on Chicago time. The time in Chicago currently is, um, let's get this time for you, 6.20 a.m. So the firefighters have been there for just under three hours fighting a fire that started uh, in a apartment building. Let's take you back out live to the scene and there you are seeing water from above uh, trying to put out these flames that firefighters 
uh, once again have been fighting off for three hours. Uh, firefighters arrived to the scene uh, and there was a fire in an apartment building on the second and third floor of that apartment building. Uh, the deputy chief outlining that the flames were mostly in the back of the building. Um, and so 150 personnel are on the scene. Uh, the fire then spread from that apartment building to nearby commercial businesses. Uh, some commercial buildings did collapse fully, which was the she images that marvelous. we were uh, bringing to you earlier this morning, where there were cars parked outside of these businesses with debris on top of the cars. Uh, once again, this all happening at 3.30 in the morning. So probably many people leaving their cars there uh, overnight. Uh, there was one man, a 60-year-old male, transported to the hospital. Uh, the deputy fire chief says he is not certain of these injuries, uh, but he does believe uh, that he was a resident of the apartment building, and he believes that he was brought in for fire inhalation and smoke inhalation uh, treatment. Here we are seeing fire crews from above trying to put out uh, the fire. One of two fires currently active. One is in the apartment building still, and then the other is this commercial business. Uh, and there we're seeing a commercial business sign just outside. Uh, heartbreaking. These are people's businesses, people's homes uh, on the northwest side of Chicago. Uh, once again, for those of you perhaps familiar with the area, uh, this happened in the Albany Park neighborhood. Uh, once again, the northwest side, the 4300 block of North Richmond Avenue. Uh, now they were uh, people watching from the sidewalk. Uh, they have since been pushed back, and there you're seeing some of the water troubles that the deputy chief was outlining. Uh, obviously, when they power all of this water to fight the fires, remaining water goes out into the street and causes uh, massive puddles uh, and issues for residents. Uh, residents of this area also are without power and light. Uh, gas as well. Uh, the gas was shut off. Uh, there are, once again, like I said, water issues on the street. Uh, but we will continue to monitor uh, this situation as it unfolds. Uh, the deputy fire chief uh, saying that he will be fighting this fire, he and his men, uh, the hundreds of firefighters on the scene. He expects them to be there all morning long. Um, that the wind conditions this morning in Chicago did not help this cause, uh, that that is why the fire spread uh, from that apartment building to the commercial businesses. Uh, the good news in all of this is that they were able to save some commercial buildings um, from complete destruction. Uh, and so that is a piece of good news that the deputy fire chief outlined here. Uh, but he said upon arrival at the scene, obviously the number one priority was getting those residents out of that three-story apartment building out to safety um, and that they were able to do that. Uh, once again, there was one man transported uh, to the hospital. Uh, we believe that he was transported there uh, due to smoke inhalation, but as soon as we get more information uh, on his condition uh, and if there were any more injuries, we will certainly bring those updates to you live, raw, and unfiltered here on Live Now from Fox. We are uh, expecting to speak with our Fox 32 Chicago team who is live on the ground. Uh, we have a reporter there who is uh, getting the latest for us. She was present. Uh, when the deputy fire chief gave that speech, just as you all were from your homes. Uh, she was also present when uh, that business owner, Marilee Rutherford, gave her speech. Uh, she is going to bring us the latest uh, on this situation. We are going to step away for a quick two-minute commercial break. We'll be right back.